up, nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to The Nerdy Narrative, where today I will be sharing with you all of the books that I plan to read for the month of October. My October TBR is based around the Stephen King Readathon, which is hosted by the bookish drummer Feeny Reads and Andrew's Wizardly Read. I'll have all of their announcement videos linked in the description box down below. It is a competitive readathon, so be sure to check out the bookish drummer's video, which lays out all of the information regarding rules and points, how it works, how you get points, how you can take away points from another team, and other fun things like that. If memory serves, you have until September 30th to join, so definitely get that checked out today if you want to be a part of it. Now let's chat about all of the things that I am planning to read for the month of October. For the most part, the books that I have scheduled fit into a prompt from the Stephen King Readathon. Some of them don't, or at least I don't think they do. I like to go into books as blind as possible. So for the most part, these books, I don't have any idea what they were about. Some of you may be thinking, well then why on earth would you know you want to read it? At some point I saw a review or a written review or an advertisement that I read and sounded good. So I added it to my TBR and this was just the month that it landed. First on this list is a collection of body horror short stories by Rob Ulitsky called Fleshed Out. This is a recent edition. So I remember why it ended up on my TBR and the first line of the description that I I saw was a story featuring a hair obsessed serial killer and I was sold. Y'all know how I love stories about serial killers so I cannot wait to read and review this one for you guys. The next one is also a recent edition. It's called The Trials of Ash Mount by John Palladino. This is one that I found on Twitter although I have seen a lot of buzz around this book from other reviewing friends who have read it recently and loved it. It was on my radar. I was on Twitter scrolling. I saw the author had tweeted they had sold 499 copies of their book which had exceeded their current goal and I had to go be number 500. And all the excitement that followed, one of my other friends is hosting a read-along for this one over on the Indie Accords in the month of October so I had to jump on board for that. I'll also be continuing my journey through the Star Wars High Republic with A Test for Courage by Justina Ireland. My husband Chris has already started listening to this one and he is flying through it. He says he thinks he's gonna have it done in a couple of days so that sounds like it's a lot better than the previous book. So I'm excited to see where this one's going to pick up and what this new author is going to do with this narrative. I will also be reading the arc for a book that I actually beta read for earlier in the year. If you guys remember that video, I'll have it linked in the cards above if you want to check it out. But that is The Animal by Chad Nicholas. I can't wait to read the arc and see what changes occurred from the beta read to the arc. So I'm really looking forward to reading that one again and getting a review written. I absolutely loved it when I beta read it. To me, it's Chad's best novel yet, so I can't wait to tell you guys all about that one. I will also be reading and reviewing the arc for Priscilla Bettis' new novella that's coming November 8th called Dog Me. From what I remember in talking with the author about this novella is it's a dystopian setting where there's no such thing as free speech. Citizens have to take an exam to determine what their future is going to be like. Are you going to be stuck in a job where you work in a slaughterhouse or will you place high enough on the exam where you're set for life because you're now a celebrity? I am extremely curious about this one. The author did tell me that she was very tasteful in regards to one of the main characters working in a slaughterhouse where he has to slaughter dogs, but there were a few pages where there were some details. She included those if I want to skip those, you know, but I think in order to to see her full intent for what she is trying to draw attention to in the story, I'm going to need to read those pages. It's going to make for an interesting reading experience, that's for sure. I think the only other thing that I'm going to read that I don't have in physical format yet is, I think it's pronounced Vi, V-I-Y by Nikolai Gogol. This is one that got put on my radar by Una from the Codex Cantina. I know when I added this one to my TBR, I knew what it was about and I was interested and wanted to read it. I have long since forgotten, so that should be for an interesting time. And so getting into the physical reads, I will be continuing in the Joan Didion read along that's hosted by the Literary Apothecary. We're reading an essay each month by Joan Didion, a nonfiction essay, and the next one that's up is called On Going Home. Based off what I've read by Joan so far, 
there's literally no telling where that one's gonna go. Next up, I have an arc here. It's a science fiction thriller called Hell Science by Ever Dundas. From what I remember, this one is supposed to be satirical and showing how the government treats the disabled and also the line between the have and have nots. It's written in three parts and this is where it gets interesting. You can read it one, two, three or two, one, three. Now, I'll be the first to admit that really intrigued me and made me curious and that is the main reason why I wanted to read this one so we'll see how that goes. And while we're talking about arcs, I have another one here called The Hollows by Daniel Church. The reason why I said yes to this one it was a phrase in the description, agonizing suspense. That brought to mind one of my favorite reads of all time, which is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I thrive on that kind of story. This is another one that I am very excited to read and talk to you guys about. And then next here, I have another short story collection that I am going to be starting. I will be buddy reading this with my friend Kate from the Literary Apothecary, Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machada. I'm really excited to get back into my groove of reading a short story every day. I've heard so many good things about this collection, as well as the author. I'm looking forward to trying these stories out and if I love them like I think I will, I'll be diving into more Carmen Maria Machado. Another collection that I want to get started on this month is Virtue's End by Joseph Sale where all of the stories are cantos, which I believe are poems in longer format. I could be completely wrong. I've had this collection on my shelf for a while. It's time to dive in and see what magic lies between these pages as well as seeing what I think about the format and how that works for me. So I'm looking forward to get started into that one finally and telling y'all all about it of course. I have one other piece of short fiction here that I'm going to be reading this month and that is Punk Ain't Undead by Ryan Hyatt. I have no idea what it's going to be about but I know it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And next is my patron pick of the month and my patron that got to choose my read for me is Tara who also has a channel which I'll have linked in the description below. This is what she chose for me. I can read it in my head but the words do not come out correctly. I tried when I did my book haul it went terribly. So I'm just going to show you guys up close. You know there's just certain letters when they're together my mouth just does it's awful and I'm not going to do that to that poor author. I will also be reading Stephen King's The Dead Zone. This is prompt number 19, which means it is the book read for the entire readathon. It's also the prompt that has the most points that you can get for your team. I have no idea what it's about. It was actually gifted to me by the bookish drummer because it's one of his favorite Stephen King reads and I'm glad I hadn't read it yet because now I get to read it with the group. I'll also be continuing my journey in the illustrated editions of the Harry Potter series. This is a buddy read that Kate from the Literary Apothecary and I are doing. She's hosting channels for it on her Discord Discord server. So if you want to join us, I'll have that information linked down below. This is my first time reading the series using the illustrated editions. And in my opinion, there's just no other way to read the series. It's phenomenal. The artwork is just everything. There's just some magic in the way that the artist captures the nostalgia from the story and puts it in the artwork. I just it's great. And this one is towards the bottom, but it's actually going to be towards the top when I start reading in October because I'm very excited for this one. It's The Dead Kids Club by Rich Hosek. It's a revenge story. One of the worst fears a parent has is outliving their child. This couple not only outlives their child, but loses their child in a way that is devastating. Their son was hit and killed by a drunk driver. The driver not only gets away with it, but they seem to have no remorse for what they've done. And these parents decide to take Take matters into their own hands, but there's always consequences. I'm really curious to see how this one is going to unfold. For all of my podcast lovers out there, Rich hosts a fiction podcast, so I'll have it linked down in the description box below so you can check that out. Next here is a highly anticipated read for me. It's Sarah Gailey's The Echo Wife. This is the book that was voted for our October pick of the month for the Wine and Crime Book Club. So if you would like to join us, we do talk about it in the Nerdy Narrative Discord while we're reading it. And then we have a live show on the last Saturday of the month. So you're welcome to join in for this one. I am so excited. Angela from Literature Science Alliance has been hyping this book up for me and I cannot wait to see what it's all about. Speaking of highly recommended books by friends, I have another one that's in that category, Maynard's House. My friend Andreas recommended this to me saying it was one of the best atmospheric horror stories set in the 70s that they've read and I just had to get on that. I mean, it's October. It's the perfect month for reading a haunted house story. I have one more here that I threw on the old October TBR, The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. 
no idea what it's about other than the obvious. So I imagine it's going to be a slasher. Here's hoping the last final girl gets rid of the bad taste in my mouth that was left there by his recent release, The Babysitter Lives. <laughs> And that'll do it, y'all. Those are all the books that I am hoping to read during the month of October. I hope there are some here that you've read and loved and you're excited to see what I'm going to think about it. I know I've got a bunch of arcs, so hopefully I'm able to review these in a way that'll give you enough information for you to decide if it's one you want to pre-order or pick up at release. So here's to hoping for some wonderful reads in October that will turn into some wonderful reads for you all after hearing about them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.